Welcome to the Wake Up Call. And today we're going to talk uh, about something that Leslie knows a little bit about, which is making a scene. <laughs> I would never do that. <laughs> Not consciously. <laughs> well, what we mean by make a scene, I'll tell you a brief story that uh, recently over the holidays, I was on my run. I usually run with my running buddy, Francis, but I was running by myself that day. It was the middle of the day, beautiful day. And I passed these two teenage girls with a little puppy and I bent down to pet their puppy on my run and I kept going. But on my way back, I noticed up the road that the puppy's leash was wrapped all the way around her owner's legs and and was cowering behind her legs. And the girl was like this because there was a teenage boy in her face screaming threatening her and her friend started waving oh, at me a oh yeah girl <laughs> oh you so you would have loved this oh, my one gosh. <laughs> so her friend starts waving at me and screams help and so you know i'm five foot three you know and and uh i had my had my phone in and a I, split moment it was mama bear taking over and i oh, mean yeah. i ran as fast as i could and i started yelling at this kid i'm like you better back up and i said some curse words they won't let me say on screen screen here but um so the the kid whips around and he's probably six four I mean, he's about 19 years old and and he says oh what's miss iphone sparkle case gonna do and i'm like let me tell you what's gonna happen <laughs> i was like i just sent a text to my teenage son and he and all his friends are gonna get right behind me and take turns kicking your ass that is what's gonna happen and so his friend is in the car like yelling at him like quit being an idiot get in the car the girl is crying and he shouted some expletives at both of, of us course. and you know got back in the car and you know I'm like on this adrenaline rush I, I remember thinking like I'm either going to jail or I'm gonna <laughs> die like right here in the road and but I am not gonna let this kid disrespect no. this girl and she sunk down onto the curb and crying and said I'm just so embarrassed that we made a scene and I basically said you deserve a scene you are worth more than a scene and certainly more than this kid and so I look over and I see a postal van so there there was like a USPS so there postal are other van people there sitting there right yeah but there was a postman sitting in there watching the whole thing go down didn't get out of his van and so I go up to the van and I'm like tap 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 as, as soon as I started walking towards his vehicle he's like rummaging around <laughs> he's like busy like he didn't like oh. mail to deliver and, and <laughs> He opened the door and I said, you know, you just watch three women take on this, right, take on this big guy in a dangerous situation. And he said, well, I just didn't think it was any of my business. And it really made me pause because I know there have been instances where I was the postman when I kind of looked away we and thought, yeah. oh, it's not my business. And, and I've been the girl. I've been in situations where I was threatened. And... Thankfully, I don't think I've ever been the punk. But uh, my whole point was, my whole run home, I'm on this adrenaline high, and, and I'm thinking, God, we all need to make a scene in big and small ways in our lives. And as women, where are we holding back? Where are we being quiet? Where are we letting ourselves be bullied? And how can we make a scene in our lives and not choke it down and not let somebody threaten us because we are either in, too embarrassed oh, or yeah. too scared? And, and I, do, I do think we should, I think that it starts, and, and a lot of times we will be saying this because you know we are mothers of daughters. Mm -hmm. And uh, even sons mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, like the guy didn't say anything. Right. You have to teach your children to make a scene. Right. You know, to speak up. Right. I remember when I was in sixth grade, true story, I, uh, that's when all the schools came together. And uh, so there were a lot of strange students mm -hmm. I didn't really know. So I had to walk the same route from my locker to class every day. And first day of school, I walk by, and this girl passes me, obviously older than me, and she said, uh, are you looking at me? And I, oh no, you know, oh my gosh, I was the tiniest little, tiniest little thing. And I'm like, no, no, and she's like, I think you were. And I said, no, I really wasn't, I'm just trying to get to class, oh my gosh. I'd never had anything like that happen before. And so, next day, 
the same thing happens. It happened every day. And she said, if you look at me again, this is on Friday after asking me all week if I looked at her, if you look at me one more time, I'm going to take you in the bathroom and shove you in that trash can. So I was like, okay. So you bought some sunglasses. Yeah, no, I wore a disguise to school from then on, took a different route. No, I did not do that. And that's the point. I, that weekend, we went to my grandma. Now, my grandma, God rest her soul, Grandma Duff, she was about four foot nine. But she had the bravery and the courage of a German shepherd. So she asked me, how was your first week at school? And I said, well, and Dad's sitting there. And uh, she, I said, well, and I told her the story about what this girl had done. And she said, well, you tell her on Monday <laughs> that she and her mom can, and grandma can meet you and I down at the IGA and we'll kick their ass. <laughs> I was like, what? And my dad's like, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. I love don't her. make a scene. Oh, and right. he did say that. Right. And that's why when you use that term, it's like that totally hits home. Yes. So Monday comes along. And it, for some reason, I, I think I understood what grandma was really trying to say to me. Obviously, me being as tiny as a little stub pencil and her being four foot nine, no way we were gonna kick anybody's ass, but we could sure act like it. Mm -hmm. And so when I went to school that Monday, I said, she walks by me and she goes, were you looking at me? I said, yes, I was. And she said, you were? I'm like, I was. And she's like, I told you if you looked at me one more time, I'm gonna take you in that bathroom and shove you in the trash can. And I was like, well, I guess you're gonna have to shove me in the trash can. And she said, after thinking a moment, I don't really have time right now. Uh huh. And she walked away. And this is no lie. And her name is Tammy. And she'll know who she is. And she is my friend on Facebook now. She guarded me with her life oh. from that day forward. I don't care where I was. If I was out with, in a sporting event or there was a school function, if you might looked at me cross-eyed, she was in their face telling them not to ever look at me. Oh, that's She had so a respect cool. for me yeah. because I was willing to to make a scene, right. to take whatever was going to happen, and I stood up for myself. Yes. You stood up for someone else. Mm -hmm. It's not only about that, but it's also standing up for yourself in a situation and not letting someone try to beat you it, down. Exactly. And and a cool um, update on this story was that when I walked the girl home, she promised that she was going to go inside and talk to her mom and maybe file an incident report. And Is this I, an ex-boyfriend? Did she talk to this you? This like, was an ex-boyfriend so like that was thing. threatening okay. her. So she sent me a text about a week and a half ago. And I, I mean, I still get teary-eyed thinking about it. And she said, thank you for standing up for me. I'm packing my stuff to go back to school in Kentucky. She was in college. She's a freshman in college. And she said, and I'm going to make a scene in a good way. And I just was That's like, awesome. oh, you know, and sometimes it takes someone else standing right. up for you, like your grandma saying, right. I'll tell you what yeah. we're going to do. Right. And, and if you can be that person for someone else, but be it for yourself and think about where is it that in my life where I feel like I need to make a scene. And I'd love to hear about it on Facebook. They could reach out to oh, both yeah, of us. totally reach out to us and let us know because... I think it's so vitally important mm -hmm. not only to find that strength within yourself mm -hmm. to stand up for someone else or yourself, but to teach your children to do that, to teach your children like my grandma did. Yeah. She had a strange way of teaching a lesson. <laughs> I love her. A little harsh, I but I understood. Yeah. She spoke my language. That's right. <laughs> and it worked, and I have never been afraid of a situation since, and there have been many that have come up. I've never been afraid to make a scene for someone else or myself. And I'm hopefully teaching my daughters and my sons yeah. the same thing. I, I may have overtaught my children this lesson. They're both pretty you feisty. May have. You I may have. I may have. My son said, wait a minute. He pulls, I'm telling the story because I got home and I'm like, oh my God, you're not going to believe what happened. And he's like, I didn't get a text. And I'm like, I didn't really text you. And he was like, next time, text oh, me. Yeah. Like he was all ready for this making a scene in the street. <laughs> He would have been bailing him out of jail. I know. But hey. But hey, that's Ryan. <laughs> so anyway, this was your wake-up call.